Welcome to Gothic Homemaking Presents. This installment was inspired not by recent events, but by something that happened months and months and months ago. Somewhere between the end of Season 1 and Season 2 of Gothic Homemaking, I received a very curious email from my friends at the Evolution Store here in New York City. They said, we're big fans of the show, we love what you do on Gothic Homemaking, but we think there's something you may have missed, something you probably wouldn't think of as Gothic, but that we think would look great in the lair. Would it be okay if we were to prove it to you by sending you a couple of gifts? Well, I said yes, and in short order, I received a box with these beautiful butterflies. The death's head moth that you see here was given to me by Madame Moth while I was on tour. While they were right, I would not have thought about butterflies to decorate a gothic lair. But they look fantastic! They look so great, in fact, that I decided to go back to the Evolution Store to see if I could find some purple butterflies to go with the color scheme here at the lair. Evolution has an absolutely gargantuan collection of mounted butterflies. But much to my surprise, there don't seem to be any that are a true purple for the lair. Then I had an idea. Why not get a beetle instead? I mean, nothing says gothic quite like creepy crawlies, am I right? I picked a couple of beetles from their drawers of unmounted insects. They were out of some of the larger insects, but I found these two fine specimens and had them specially framed. They look absolutely great on the wall, or you can display them in front of a candle like this. Just be sure not to put them too close to the candle or the glue could melt. Most of these insects come from Southeast Asia, so I decided maybe I would take a trip to Thailand to see if I could find some really large specimens for the Lair of Voltaire. Take a look. Up in the mountains of Chiang Mai, you'll find the Siam Insect Zoo. This place is an absolute treasure trove of local insect history and information. There's everything from beetles to a large collection of butterflies. There's even a butterfly garden where you can get up close and personal with these winged beauties. And it's very hands-on. There's a spot where you can handle grubs or stick insects like this skinny fellow. Or peek in on luminescent scorpions. Who knew they glowed like that? Pretty cool. And while they're arachnids and not technically insects, there was a place where you could hold a live scorpion. Uh, they're trying everything they can to get me to hold it, but uh, I've been stung by a scorpion before. I've had enough. One, one scorpion sting is enough for me. I did agree to hold this little cutie. They apparently hatched them there themselves from eggs. The giant tarantulas were on display in their own outdoor structure. A place you arachnophobes would probably call Chateau Oh Hell No. They had a very impressive collection of tarantulas from all over the world. The Siam Insect Zoo is an amazing place, but the one thing they don't have is mounted insects for sale. Luckily, the next day, I was at the Sunday Market in Chiang Mai. There, among the food stalls, in the shadow of a gorgeous temple, I stumbled upon a vendor selling mounted insects, and they were enormous. I picked up two atlas beetles, though I wasn't really sure about the frames. So, back in New York City, I returned to the Evolution Store to have them reset in frames more suitable for the Lair of Voltaire. Now, the Evolution Store has no shortage of mounted insects, but this time while I was there, I spotted some amazing decorative mounts, like these beetles climbing a branch, as well as these gorgeous butterfly displays. These are ready to adorn any lair. There was also this whimsical butterfly perched on a skull. 
Now when it comes to butterflies and skulls, there's a man you've got to meet, and his name is Brian Wiseman. A short while back, I was performing in Dallas, Texas at The Church. The next day, I went to do a little shopping at a place called Dolly Python Vintage. Just a few steps away is a place called Benny Jack Antiques. This place is a real treasure. When it comes to taxidermy and curiosities, this place has some of the best, the strangest, and most unexpected pieces I've seen in a shop. There was no shortage of great finds in this place, and I have to tell you, I found the prices surprisingly reasonable. While there, I got to meet Brian Wiseman. He took the time to tell me about these amazing skull and butterfly pieces he makes. That's a real skull. Then all the butterflies are, are all real uh, dried butterflies. With the help of shop owner Benny Jack, Brian kindly removed the glass to give me a better look at his creation. Um, all of my skulls are ethically sourced. It's, believe it or not, it's totally, absolutely legal to totally. own human skulls. So most human skulls come from closed down medical schools um, that are selling off their collection. My, my butterflies as well, and an important thing to mention about the butterflies is they're all sourced from butterfly farms. So there's no environmental impact that happens from taking the butterflies out of the wild. So there's nobody, nobody out there running around with the big net catching all the butterflies. Right. If you don't like human skulls in your decorations, he also had these other butterfly-based works of art. You can see more of Brian's work on his Instagram page where he goes by Skinny Boy Arts. Go give him a follow. But it didn't end there. Apparently Brian was the artist who mounted some of my favorite pieces in the shop, including this enormous hanging fruit bat skeleton. and that gorgeous carrion crow on a resin skull. Whoever ends up with these pieces is one lucky bastard. Getting back to decorating with insects, while I was in Dallas, I popped into one of my favorite shops there, a place called Curiosities. Take a look. This place is huge. It's nothing short of a labyrinth and it's filled with all manner of crazy things like skulls, Victorian oddities, taxidermy, and those ancient anal stretchers you've always wanted, and um, other wonderfully monstrous things. Being on the hunt for insects, I was delighted to find this cabinet. Owner Jason Cohen was kind enough to pull out some of the items for a closer look. Now I've seen many insect collections before, but never ones like these. Alain Van Vive, the French artist who makes them, calls them mosaics. You can find more of his work on his Etsy page. They are truly works of art. And speaking of works of art, in that same cabinet at Curiosities was the work of husband and wife team Breck and Sandy Outland. They make these incredible works of art from insects, gems, and crystals that they grow themselves. They're truly magnificent. If you're ever in Dallas, I highly suggest you check out Curiosities. Their website is getcuriosities.com. My next stop was at Bearded Lady Vintage and Oddities in Burbank, California. Right next door at their Mystic Museum, they had an exhibit on the paranormal. It was there that I first encountered the work of Ave Rose. Her fine art pieces incorporate insects in a really lovely way. These pieces are just scratching the surface of what this artist does. I looked her up online and I was completely blown away by her huge collection of animated insects, 
taxidermy, and other oddities. The way she breathes life into things that are dead and reanimates them is really something to see. It's truly impressive. Visit her at averoseart.com and you will see what I mean. Well, back at Bearded Lady Vintage and Oddities, there was no shortage of insect art. Like this amazing piece by shop co-owner Eric Yarrow Vessel, made from a butterfly, dried flowers, and a vintage casket plate. The other co-owner, the impossibly beautiful Kiko, was kind enough to remove the glass from another of Eric's pieces for a closer look. This one is made from a cicada, a butterfly, and more vintage hardware, and it's just gorgeous. All of this amazing insect art inspired me to make a piece of my own. From their collection of unmounted insects, I purchased several of these curious blue bumblebees. But I'm going to show you what I did with those next time. For now, I've picked up the newly framed insects from Evolution, and they look great! Now, as always, I like to present a vegan option for those of you who do not wish to decorate with actual animal parts. And for you, I would recommend this. These are some vinyl wall decals. These were given to me by DJ Virus and his lovely wife. The last time I performed in Dallas at the church, they have some tombstones inside and some ravens, but believe it or not, they also have quite a lot of insects. A simple search on Etsy for insect vinyl wall decals should present you with a wealth of options, both whimsical and realistic. And they're really quite simple to put up. For a full demonstration of how to put up vinyl wall decals, check out Gothic Homemaking Episode 3, A Shame of Thrones Part 1. And that, my spooky friends, is how you decorate with insects. Tune in next time when I show you what I did with those blue bumblebees that I bought in a DIY insect decorating project of my own. Until then, sleep tight and don't let the bed bugs bite. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to like the video and subscribe so that you'll never miss another Gothic Homemaking video. Full episodes of Gothic Homemaking can be seen right here on The Lair of Voltaire.